In the quiet of a death row cell, a man pens his final words. I never thought I'd find a friend in this place of despair. It's a sentiment that echoes in the hearts of many as they navigate the harrowing realities of life on death row. But from the depths of despair, an unlikely beacon of hope emerges. A pen friendship. The concept of pen friendships with death row prisoners might strike one as unusual. After all, why would anyone choose to correspond with individuals who have been deemed by society as unfit to live among us? Yet, these friendships are far more common than one might think. They trace their origins back to a time when written correspondence was the primary means of communication. Fast forward to the digital age, and these relationships have only grown, fostered by a shared humanity that transcends the physical confines of a prison cell. Typically, these friendships begin with a simple letter, a beacon of hope thrown into the abyss. They are often born out of a desire to understand, to empathize, and to connect with another human being on a deep, meaningful level. The motivations behind these relationships vary. Some are driven by a quest for justice, a belief in redemption, or a simple act of compassion. Others are sparked by curiosity, a need to comprehend the complexities of the human psyche. Life on death row is a life lived in the shadows, a world within a world. A world where the ticking of the clock carries a different weight, where the days are marked not by the rising and setting of the sun, but by the relentless march towards an inevitable end. In this somber world, the daily realities can be as mundane as they are intense. The strict routine is the backbone of existence. Wake-up calls echo in the early morning, followed by breakfast served through a small slot in the steel door. The rest of the day is a monotonous cycle of meals, solitary time, and the occasional visit or phone call. The confines of a small cell become the universe for these individuals. Yet within these walls, a microcosm of society emerges. Hierarchies form, friendships are forged, and sometimes amidst the despair, a sense of community develops. However, the emotional toll is immense. Imagine living each day with the knowledge of your impending doom. Every heartbeat is a reminder of the countdown, every breath a borrowed moment. It's a life of constant dread, a life under the Damocles sword, yet it's also a life that bears testament to the resilience of the human spirit. How do these individuals cope with their circumstances? Some find solace in religion, their faith offering a refuge from the harsh reality of their existence. Others immerse themselves in art or literature, creating a mental escape from their physical confinement. A handful channel their energy into education, earning degrees behind bars. Not only does this provide a sense of accomplishment, but it also allows them to contribute to society in a meaningful way, even from within their cells. Then, there are those who become legal warriors, learning the intricacies of the law in a bid to challenge their sentences. Their battles are uphill, their victories often pyrrhic, but their efforts are a testament to their determination. And let's not forget the simple act of dreaming. In a world of concrete and steel, dreams become a sanctuary, a place where they can be free, if only for a while. A place where they're not defined by their worst actions, but are allowed to remember their best selves. In this grim reality, hope becomes a precious commodity. It's the light at the end of a long, dark tunnel. It's the belief in a tomorrow that might never come. It's the courage to face each day despite the shadow of death looming large. Life on death row is a life of paradoxes, a life of despair and hope, confinement and freedom, endings and beginnings. It's a life that challenges our perceptions of what it means to live and what it means to die. In the midst of despair, they find ways to survive, to persist, to hold on to their humanity. In the cruelest of circumstances, they teach us about resilience, about the indomitable spirit of humans, and the endless capacity for hope. And in doing so, they remind us of the inherent value of every life, no matter how far it has fallen into the shadows. In the aftermath of a crime, the journey towards forgiveness can be as turbulent as the crime itself. Imagine a world turned upside down, where a loved one's laughter is replaced by a deafening silence. This is the harsh reality for families of victims, a reality marked by a sudden and profound loss. A reality where the road to healing is as elusive as a wisp of smoke. The struggle with forgiveness is a journey fraught with pain and resentment. It's a tug of war between the heart's desire for revenge and the soul's yearning for peace. It's a battle between the past and the present, between the need to remember and the urge to forget. For many, this struggle feels like an insurmountable mountain, its peak hidden behind clouds of anger and despair. Yet nestled within this struggle, 
there is a seed of resilience. It's the quiet determination to rebuild, to heal, to move forward. It's the courage to face the pain, to wrestle with the resentment, and to find a way to forgive. This is not about absolving the perpetrator of the crime. Instead, it's about liberating oneself from the shackles of hatred, about reclaiming one's life from the clutches of bitterness. The power of empathy plays a pivotal role in this journey. It's about stepping into another's shoes, about understanding their motivations and their regrets. It's about acknowledging the shared humanity that binds us all, about recognizing that even those who commit heinous acts are, in the end, human. Compassion, too, is a beacon in this tumultuous journey. It's the soft whisper that urges us to extend kindness, even to those who have caused us pain. It's the gentle reminder that love and understanding are stronger than any act of violence. Compassion is the bridge that connects us, a bridge built on the foundation of shared suffering and shared hope. The stories of these families are a testament to the transformative power of forgiveness. They show us that even in the face of unimaginable pain, it is possible to find peace. They remind us that forgiveness is not a destination, but a journey. It's a journey marked by setbacks and victories, by tears and smiles, by pain and healing. The journey towards forgiveness is a path we walk alone, but it doesn't mean we are alone in our struggle. There are countless others who have walked this path, who have stumbled and fallen, who have picked themselves up and carried on. They are a source of inspiration, a beacon of hope in the darkest of nights. The road to forgiveness is long and winding, but for some, it leads to a place of peace and understanding. They are proof that even in the aftermath of a crime, it is possible to rise from the ashes, to heal, to forgive. They are proof that the human spirit is indomitable, that love and compassion can triumph over hatred and resentment. They are proof that forgiveness, though a difficult journey, is a journey worth undertaking. In the sterile confines of a prison infirmary, healthcare professionals face a unique set of challenges. The stark white walls and the cold clinical atmosphere serve as an unwelcome reminder of the dire circumstances that brought them here. Yet amid this bleak environment, these professionals seek to provide a beacon of compassion and care. These healthcare workers are tasked with a duty that transcends the traditional roles of their profession. They are not just the healers of physical ailments, they are confidants, listeners, and sometimes the only source of human connection for the inmates living on death row. Their jobs entail more than just the administration of medicine. They must navigate a delicate balance between empathy and professionalism, a task that is far from easy. Imagine, if you will, the internal struggle these professionals might experience. The individuals they care for are not just patients, but individuals convicted of serious crimes, awaiting their final moments on death row. It's a situation that raises profound questions about morality, ethics, and the very nature of humanity itself. What motivates these healthcare workers to choose this path? For some, it's a deep-rooted belief in the sanctity of life, a conviction that everyone, regardless of their past actions, deserves care and compassion. For others, it's a commitment to their professional oath to provide medical care without judgment. Yet, their work is not without its ethical dilemmas. How does one reconcile the duty to preserve life with the knowledge that their patients are destined for execution? How does one maintain a professional distance when confronted with the raw emotional realities of death row? These are the questions that these healthcare professionals grapple with each day. The emotional toll of their work is often heavy. They witness the fear, the despair, the hope, and sometimes the acceptance that comes with living on death row. They are often the last point of human contact, the last face seen, and the last voice heard by these inmates. It's an emotional burden that demands incredible strength and resilience. Despite the challenges, these healthcare workers continue to do their jobs with unwavering dedication. They continue to provide care, to listen, and to empathize. They continue to uphold their professional duty, even in the face of the harshest realities. They do this because they believe in the inherent dignity of all individuals, even those who society has deemed unworthy. They strive to ensure that every individual regardless of their circumstances, is treated with respect and compassion. They bear witness to the darkest corners of human existence, yet they remain committed to their cause. So as we delve into the lives of these healthcare professionals, we find a narrative that is both deeply challenging and profoundly inspiring. It's a story of strength, resilience, and an unwavering commitment to humanity. They stand at the precipice, a bridge between life and death, 
offering care and compassion in the face of oblivion. They are the unsung heroes, the silent warriors who, in their own unique way, strive to make a difference in a world shrouded in darkness. In the end, we are all more than the worst thing we have ever done. This statement, powerful in its simplicity, underscores the core sentiment of our exploration. It's a reflection on the human experience, the complexities of life and death, and the power of connection. We have journeyed together through stories of life on death row, the impact of crime on victims' families, and the compassionate work of healthcare professionals who engage with inmates on death row. These narratives are complex, painful, and often challenging to comprehend, yet they are an integral part of our shared human experience. We've come to understand that life on death row is not merely about waiting for an execution, it's about resilience in the face of adversity, about forming unexpected bonds, and about finding humanity in the most unlikely places. It's a world filled with stories of struggle, but also of strength. The profound impact of crime on a victim's family is an unfathomable burden. Yet, we've seen journeys of forgiveness that are truly inspiring. We've witnessed the transformative power of empathy and compassion, a testament to the strength of the human spirit. Healthcare professionals who interact with these inmates are another facet of this intricate tapestry. Their work is often emotionally taxing, yet they persevere, driven by a deep sense of duty and compassion. They bridge the gap between life and death, providing care to those who are often forgotten by society. As we reflect on these stories, we come to realize that our world is a complex web of interconnected experiences. We are shaped by our circumstances, our actions, and our interactions with others. We are all bound by the shared human experiences of pain and joy, hope and despair, love and loss. These narratives also challenge us to think deeply about the concepts of justice, punishment, and rehabilitation. They ask us to question our preconceived notions and to engage in meaningful dialogue about these crucial issues. Throughout this journey, we've seen how the power of connection can transcend even the most formidable barriers. Pen friendships with death row inmates, the bonds formed between healthcare workers and their patients, the connections made between victims' families and those who have caused them harm. These relationships are a testament to our innate need for understanding and companionship. We hope that these stories have touched you, moved you, and perhaps even challenged you. We invite you to reflect on these narratives, to ponder the complexities of the human experience, and to engage with these topics in a thoughtful and compassionate manner. We encourage you to share your thoughts, your insights, and your perspectives. Every voice adds a unique thread to the rich tapestry of this conversation. Your opinions matter, your voices matter, you matter. As we conclude this episode, we invite you to join us in the next installment of our series. We will delve deeper into the world of death row and the ripple effects of crime and punishment. We will continue to explore these complex narratives to challenge our perceptions and to engage in meaningful dialogue. Join us in the next episode as we delve deeper into the world of death row and the ripple effects of crime and punishment. Thank you for being a part of this journey. We look forward to continuing this conversation with you. From the moment of sentencing, a death row inmate embarks on a journey unlike any other. A journey marked not by milestones of joy, but by the looming specter of an ultimate end. The first blow is the psychological impact of the death sentence, a weight that settles in the pits of their stomachs, a constant reminder of the countdown to their final moments. It's a burden that permeates every aspect of their existence, casting a shadow over even the simplest daily routines. Next, the process of appeals begins. This is perhaps the most tumultuous part of the journey. It's a roller coaster of hope and despair, as each appeal brings the possibility of a lifeline only to be snatched away by the harsh reality of the judicial process. The uncertainty of this period is mentally and emotionally draining, a test of resilience and fortitude. As the appeals exhaust and the final days approach, the reality of their fate becomes more palpable. The final days and hours leading up to execution are filled with a surreal mixture of fear, acceptance, and even a strange sense of relief. For some, it's a time for reflection, for making peace with their past and their impending future. For others, it's a whirlwind of emotions that are hard to articulate. The journey of a death row inmate is a testament to the human spirit's resilience in the face of the ultimate adversity. It's a stark reminder of our capacity to endure, to find moments of humanity in the harshest of circumstances. As we move to the conclusion of this episode, we invite you to reflect on this journey to grapple with its complexities, and to join us as we continue to explore these compelling narratives in our next installment. 
Thank you for being a part of this journey. The legal system plays a pivotal role in the life of a death row inmate. It is the machine that sets the wheels of their journey in motion and the force that shapes its trajectory. The intricacies of the legal process from trial to sentencing are fraught with complexities that can be hard to grasp. The defense attorneys, often the only allies in an environment that is largely hostile, face a daunting task. They navigate a labyrinth of laws, precedents, and procedures, their every move scrutinized under the watchful eyes of judges and prosecutors. Their role extends beyond the courtroom, as they become the inmates' confidants, their pillars of support, and their beacon of hope in the face of overwhelming odds. The impact of legal decisions goes beyond the confines of the prison. It reverberates in the lives of the inmates' loved ones, a constant reminder of a system that holds the power of life and death. The legal system with all its complexities is a key player in the narrative of death row. It is a system that can seem cold and impersonal, yet it holds in its hands the fates of those who have been deemed the most heinous among us. As we delve deeper into this narrative, it is crucial to understand the role of the legal system and to question its place in the journey of a death row inmate. The ripple effects of a death sentence extend far beyond the inmate. The shockwaves touch every aspect of their family's lives, creating a ripple effect that is often overlooked in the narrative of crime and punishment. When a loved one is sentenced to death, the family is thrown into a state of limbo. They are left to grapple with the grim reality of their loved one's fate, often in the public eye. As the clock ticks down towards the inevitable, families are faced with the emotional toll of maintaining relationships with their condemned loved ones. The prison visits, the phone calls, the letters, they all serve as a stark reminder of the impending loss. Yet they also serve as a lifeline, a way to hold on to the human being behind the inmate number. The stigma associated with having a family member on death row is another heavy burden to bear. It seeps into every aspect of their lives, casting a long shadow that can be hard to escape. The judgment, the whispers, the isolation, these are all part of the collateral damage inflicted on the families of death row inmates. And then, there is the process of grief and loss. But this is a grief that is unique in its complexity. It is a grief that begins long before the loss, a grief that is tinged with fear, with anger, with regret. It is a grief that is played out in the shadow of a looming execution, a grief that is often endured in silence. The families of death row inmates bear a heavy burden, often overlooked in the narrative of crime and punishment. They are the silent victims, their lives forever altered by a system that has deemed their loved one unworthy of life. As we continue to explore the journey of a death row inmate, let us not forget the impact on these families and the role they play in this narrative. In the somber reality of death row, activism emerges as a powerful force, challenging the status quo and advocating for change. Activists, both individual and institutional, work relentlessly to shine a light on the grim realities of capital punishment. They raise awareness about the systemic flaws that often lead to wrongful convictions, the disproportionate impact on marginalized communities, and the brutal finality of the death penalty. Through public rallies, online campaigns, and tireless lobbying, activists are instrumental in shaping public opinion and influencing policy. They are the voices that question, that challenge, that refuse to be silenced. Among these voices are those who have experienced the system firsthand, families of death row inmates, exonerated former prisoners, and even former executioners who have turned against the system. Their personal stories humanize the narrative, making it a powerful tool in the fight against the death penalty. Take, for instance, the story of Suzanne Bosler. Bosler's father was murdered, and the man responsible was sentenced to death. Despite her personal loss, Bosler became an advocate against the death penalty. Her journey took her to the heart of the beast, the death row cell of the man who killed her father, there, she found not a monster, but a man, broken and remorseful. Bosler's story is a testament to the power of forgiveness and the transformative potential of activism. Activism is more than a call for change. It is a beacon of hope in the grim landscape of the death penalty. It challenges the narrative of retribution with a plea for compassion, for understanding, and for justice that is truly just. As we delve deeper into the journey of death row, let us remember these voices. Let us remember the power of activism and the role it plays in redefining the narrative of crime and punishment. As we navigate through the labyrinth of the death penalty system, we arrive at a crossroads. The future of the death penalty is a topic of heated debate. 
On one hand, supporters argue that it serves as a deterrent, a tool for retribution, and a necessary evil for the most heinous crimes. On the other hand, detractors highlight its inherent flaws, its potential for irreversible error, and its moral and ethical implications. The landscape, however, is shifting. Global trends show a steady decline in the use of the death penalty, with more and more countries abolishing it in law or in practice. This is a reflection of changing societal attitudes towards punishment, justice, and the value of human life. Yet, the journey is far from over. The question that remains is, what comes next? What alternatives are there to the death penalty that still uphold justice, protect society, and deter crime? Some argue for life imprisonment without parole, while others advocate for restorative justice practices that focus on rehabilitation and reconciliation, rather than retribution. The future of the death penalty hangs in the balance, with the scales tipping towards justice, compassion, and reform. As we look forward, let us remember the lessons from the past and the voices of the present. Let us strive for a future where justice is not just about punishment, but about healing, understanding, and ultimately, redemption.